Deshaun Foster, fall camp begins, they're going to have a successful season this year. What does that look like? You are Locked On UCLA, your daily podcast on the UCLA Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to this edition of Locked On UCLA Podcast. I'm your host, Zach Anderson Yoxheimer. Thanks for making this show your first listen each and every day. It's free wherever you get your podcast, and it's available on YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for your support. All right, where we get started today is that this episode is brought to you by Game Time because you're going to want to go see these Bruins in person. They're going to have a successful campaign. And despite all the hate, whether it's Deshaun Foster's opening statement, whether it's Big Ten Bruins, whether it's lack of fans, go get the tickets and prove them wrong. Because I'm going to tell you why UCLA is going to prove people wrong. Mostly because the expectations are so low this year for UCLA. Extremely, extremely low. When Chip Kelly bolted for Ohio State, then he had to go into the quick whirlwind weekend of hiring Deshaun Foster. Had to replenish not the guys leaving the portal, because not that much, not that many guys left, but the talent for the defense lost. They had to replace the lack of recruiting from Chip Kelly year over year over year, especially those last few years, last two years of his, of his recruiting cycles. They're pretty ga- gosh dang awful. If you don't include Dante Moore, who already left, right? Literally hit the portal, left, and UCLA was stuck. But Deshaun Foster's done his best. And if you look at FanDuel right now, FanDuel has UCLA at four and a half wins for the over-under total this year, heading to the 2024 season. I've talked about this early spring. Now we're heading into fall camp. QB1, Ethan Garbers. You've got a set skill, you got a set amount of skill players around him. You've got a schedule where I think UCLA is going to hit the over four and a half win mark. All right, let's revisit this schedule, right? This is the year or week one of the college football season actually starts in August, August 31st. So that means you get a cut, you get like that extra week baked in based on where Labor Day falls this year. So early in September, UCLA is going to have that low break, right? So UCLA, you sit here and they have to find a way to get some victories. Most importantly, it's going to come from them playing Hawaii week one. When they go to Hawaii, UCLA has to get that victory. Then you got Indiana, LSU, Oregon, Penn State, Minnesota, Rutgers on the road. You got Nebraska, Iowa, Washington, SC, and then Fresno State to end the year, right? So UCLA, I've read different reports, different things. It can go anywhere from seven and five is a super successful year. Six and six, go bowling would be fun. Three and nine or have some prognosticators going crazy that UCLA will not be successful, especially after Deshaun Foster made everybody go crazy when he didn't do well at the speech. I I don't give him too much flack for that because it's a lot harder than it looks, but here we are. UCLA has a season, in my mind, that should do much better than the four and a half win total that FanDuel and most, you know, win-loss totals over-unders are giving them. This is a year and a team where I think the Big Ten is still overrated in certain aspects. Doesn't mean the trips aren't hard. Doesn't mean there should be embarrassing moments or tough games. But I do think UCLA is going to over hit over the four and a half win total. Okay, let's look week one. Let's go week by week and give you a close total to what UCLA's win total should be. Again, I've done this before, but now we're closer to the season. We know what the Bruins have. And they've pretty much, for the most part, done their portal shopping. Week one against Hawaii, must win, must win. Deshaun Foster loses that game week one at Hawaii. I don't know what to tell you, especially with coaching changes, quarterback change, everything, right? UCLA has to win the game against Hawaii. Not that Hawaii hasn't pulled off an upset before, but from what I've seen, it doesn't look like Hawaii has one of those 10-win seasons coming up in them right now, all right? That's just not what the Rainbow Warriors have. So if UCLA does not win this game, in Honolulu, it won't bode well for the rest of the season. If they lose that game, all bets are off. Then you play Indiana after a bye. One of two buys UCLA gets this year because the college football season starts so early. You get two buys this year built into the schedule. All right, I might have erroneously said it was week zero or whatever. College football season starts so early 
Week zero is August 24th. Week one is August 31st. So there's more breaks built into a schedule where UCLA has so much travel involved that this is actually, yes, a two by year. And that's where UCLA is going to help out. Indiana, new team, new coach. They're coming to the Rose Bowl. It's the home opener. There'll be three weeks in to the college football season before we see the Bruins at home. And we won't have two performances to go from. And you're already playing Big Ten football. All right. Indiana, that's in that group where UCLA's bunched in, where you don't know near the bottom of the Big Ten what's going to happen, right? Indiana's had close to top 10 season in 2020. They had Michael Penix Jr. fill off the map of a little bit after he eventually went to Washington after his injury issues. That went well for Penix Jr. Not so well for Indiana. Indiana coaching change, that is another must-win game. I remember when UCLA set the tone week one against Cincinnati in Chip Kelly's debut, where they should have won. The quarterback got her, a veteran guy, set the stage for a young DTR, and UCLA was not good in that opening year under Chip Kelly. So if we get a packed Rose Bowl and things aren't going well, that will be an ugly sort of sight to see because then the Big Ten fans are going to raid the Rose Bowl in many different colors, most of them being red, and it will be ugly for years to go. But if UCLA can knock off Indiana, then it gives you some good vibes heading into the LSU game, right? Which normally, you know, week four, it's a little late for a non-conference game. That's not like a midweek rivalry, mid-year rivalry type of game. If you're like thinking of, you know, end of season rivalry games, how UCLA Cal will probably be going forward once they have a non-conference set going and going. UCLA LSU I do think, well, obviously, LSU is changing quarterbacks, right? They don't have Jane Daniels. And I think that's the benefit for UCLA. It'll be their first big-time road game. They'll be four weeks into the season. And that is the game where we'll find out if Deshaun Foster is going to come out and put UCLA on the official hype map. If UCLA wins that game, they're on the official national hype machine where they'll be like, oh my goodness, look at the Bruins, look at the Bruins, right? Everybody's going to be like, whoa, if they can win that game. I think for reality's sake, as optimistic as I want to be, it is not fair to go say they're going to go win at LSU right now with what UCLA has. Now, by the time week four comes around, they're playing well, if the enemy's doing things, the offense is clicking, the defense hasn't done any, is playing, you know, respectably, then... We'll find out. But at this moment, I cannot reasonably and rationally say they can go to LSU and win that game at this moment. So you think two and one. Then you look at what's the toughest three-game stretch between LSU, Oregon, Penn State. All right? Penn State on the road, elite road thing, elite road atmosphere. Oregon at home, Pac-12 rival coming to the Rose Bowl, turn Big Ten rival. Dylan Gabriel, new coach, new quarterback you've got. Dante Moore will probably get a couple of boos with him being on the bench after transferring away. I wonder what the crowd's going to do that with his return, even though he won't play. Most likely redshirting at Oregon and Eugene this year. You know, Oregon's not going to be, in my mind, that same juggernaut they were last year under Bo Nix. Now, Dan Lanning's done things and made them a good program. So we can argue all day. I'd like to say UCLA might have a sneakier shot in a home game in that atmosphere than they would most times. But, you know, not looking like they'd be favored in those games. UCLA, after probably a 2-1 and start, probably going to find themselves with what looks to be three consecutive losses, even though the Oregon game, I think, could be a stolen win, which, you know, it depends what Oregon shows. I think one of these three games between LSU, Oregon, and Penn State is one where UCLA can shock somebody and go win. It's just unfortunate that two of those are in the most intimidating road atmospheres that none of these players have played in other than going to visit Otson in 22 when that was the biggest game UCLA had played in quite some time of college game day. Then you've got the part of the schedule where UCLA can go on a real winning streak, right? I've only truly gotten two wins in the first five to six games for UCLA. Although I'd like to say they can steal one of those three-week, you know, hell week games and get a dub for UCLA to get a successful season, get that bowling scenario. It's going to come down to sweeping 
some of these home games. You got to beat Minnesota. UCLA has to steal the Nebraska game. The Rutgers, too. All these teams are changing quarterbacks. And I've already gone and said Penn State's quarterback, I think, is, you know, overrated despite all the hype. You've got LSU changing quarterback, Oregon changing quarterbacks, Rutgers, Nebraska, you know, Iowa changing offensive coordinators, Washington changing quarterbacks and coaches, all right? USC changing quarterbacks, Fresno State, all right? That's at the end of the year, right? And they're going to be battling if they want to be in the group of five playoff spot, which is guaranteed. So there's a lot of teams that are changing quarterbacks on this schedule. I've talked about this months ago on Locked on UCLA, but a lot of these teams are changing quarterbacks and changing coaches and offensive coordinators, just like UCLA is. But the Bruins have a lot of intact on offense. Defense, it's another story. But for a lot of teams that are changing quarterbacks, changing coaches, I'm not sure they're all going to be ready, you know, in year one. By the time UCLA plays uh, Nebraska in November, I'm thinking if it's Dylan Rayola, who's still quarterback as the freshman, then, you know, I think you'll have enough reps to make it okay. At this point, though, after UCLA saw what they had with the true freshman quarterback, despite him being a hyped five-star, we, we've learned a lesson. Not everybody's going to be ready week one, year one, with what they have at quarterback, new coaching scheme, new everything, which – you can turn it to UCLA and say they're not ready, but the experience they have at the coordinator position, the players they have returning, a lot of veteran players, I do think the Bruins will make a run for their money when it comes to Minnesota, Nebraska, Fresno State. Those are three games UCLA has to win to go bowling, right? Between Fresno, between Fresno State, Nebraska, Minnesota, win those games. And if UCLA can steal between the Iowa game at home on a Friday night, the UCLA-USC game, always a big rivalry game at home, in Washington on a Friday night on the road. One of those three games, you can steal and get yourselves to go bowling. Now, I do think there's a possibility where UCLA can get seven wins. It would involve upsetting Rutgers on the road. It would involve an Iowa win and a USC-UCLA win and probably stealing one of those three dreadful week games against Penn State, LSU, and Oregon. But for now, if you look into where UCLA can get a successful season, it involves Hawaii, Indiana wins, Fresno State, and then Nebraska, Minnesota, and something with one of those two of the last three home games they got to win in November, late November. That is where UCLA can go bowling and get a successful season. The expectations are so low at this moment that I think there's optimism for this season to be successful. Not going to the college football playoff, but that is where UCLA is to move things going forward, increase the recruiting for 25 heading into 26, and set Deshaun Foster up for success in years to come. In the portal, recruiting, and what the players are going to set in this foundation and legacy for him going forward. Now, what do they need specifically when it comes to moving parts, line, defense, quarterback? We'll talk about that next on Locked on UCLA. You know, football season's here. That means if you haven't gotten your tickets yet, you're not a season ticket holder of any sort, you're probably going to be buying single-game tickets closer to the event. Whether you're traveling to Hawaii or LSU, or you're just simply trying to get to the Rose Bowl, you want to, go, want to go to game time. Whether you're trying to finish out your summer of ball games with Major League Baseball or get to college football, most importantly, you're going to want to see those views from your seats. Because it's like, hey, am I sitting upper, upper deck? Am I sitting, what part of the bowl am I sitting at the Rose Bowl? In the sun, in the shade, all in prices, it, is it really worth it to go to all these games? Well, game time can give you up to 60% off buying last-minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, etc. All right? Take the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets with game time. Download the app. Create an account. Use the code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Again, terms apply. Create an account. Use the code Locked On College. L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-C-L-L-E-G-E. Locked On College for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, cruising on here in Locked On UCLA. And what we're talking about in this next segment is what specifically does UCLA need to have that successful season? I've talked about can they have a successful season? I like to believe they can. They've got games that are built in against offenses that are bringing new quarterbacks, teams that are bringing in new coaches, successful teams 
that have new coaches because they left to Alabama, like Kalen DeBoer, although Jay Fish said of great things in Arizona, could bring his whole team of Arizona players to Washington. So it's still a new thing for him, even if it might be successful down the line. There's so many new things. USC, right? They're replacing Caleb Williams. As good as Miller Moss looked like in the bowl game, Lincoln Riley's got to prove his teams can actually play defense, even though they got Danton Land, they have co-defensive coordinators. And what's the new offense going to look like? Do they have an offensive line? Those are just a few questions surrounding the opponents facing UCLA, of which there are many, including the Bruins facing their own at this point in fall camp, which begins for the Bruins at the end of July in 2024. And while we're still a couple of days away between before becoming an official Big Ten member, UCLA has some questions to answer. Can they protect Ethan Garbers? And 1A, 1B, offensively, can Garbers prove to be a legitimate QB1? The Bruins, when Garbers played last year, when he started games, UCLA only lost once, right? When he started and finished the game, they never lost, technically. So, yes, he did start the Cal game. He did start the Arizona game. The games he started and he finished, the UCLA Bruins did not lose, right? Between Dante Moore, when he was the starter for all those games, throwing many pick sixes, the defense did so much to help UCLA in those games. And with Chip Kelly's refusal to make cute quarterback switches, unlike what any other coach would have done, can Garbers be a legitimate QB1 in the West Coast style offense under Eric Bieniemy? right? In the previous six years, UCLA was very, very run heavy. Prior to that, it was almost all Josh Rosen under Jim Mora who slung it around for 500 yards a game and the Bruins couldn't really compete at the end of the Jim Mora era. Despite a good freshman year from Josh Rosen, UCLA, they couldn't compete. So they've gone from run 53, 55% of the time throw almost all the time with Josh Rosen and failed to establish a legitimate running game. And now you might have a happy medium, a veteran quarterback who's been to a couple places in the Pac-12 slash Big Ten. He's been under the tutelage of Chip Kelly. And whatever you think about him, still a solid offensive mind. Now Eric Bieniemy, he has receiving threats he's had from the year before, seen what it's like to lose his job, and has performed when he needed to at a bowl game, when he, UCLA played and dominated USC. And he doesn't need to do it all, but he needs to be a legitimate quarterback one because I believe what Eric Bieniemy is trying to install this year is going to need a bit more quarterback play than what we saw from the Chip Kelly offense, where a simple route, simple patterns, that now UCLA is going to have a little more NFL style to it, an NFL look to it, while they can still lean heavily on Harden, Jones, whatever backs they want to use in 2024. All right, they can do what they need to do, but Garbers has to prove in these games he can throw some big-time passes because there are some games when they played like USC, when they played some like games against Arizona, when they need pinpoint passing, pinpoint accuracy, Garbers didn't show that in his junior year, right? There are reasons we saw why he lost his job and why there was the tantalizing talent of Dante Moore that ended up just not being as consistent as Garbers was overall from game to game, throw to throw. Now, Garbers doesn't need to be a Heisman winner, but he does need to be good for UCLA to get to that 6-7 win plateau to have a successful season. And maybe UCLA only gets to 4-5 to five wins, right? It's not all going to be on Garbers because he needs his line to protect him. If he has time, if the offensive line is much improved, after what Deshaun Foster had worked to go get in the portal and shore up what was a very poor Chip Kelly recruiting cycle in the offensive line that could not replace elite NFL talent they had in 21 and 22, then the Bruins, they got to be able to move the football and protect the quarterback, whether it's run blocking, pass blocking. The Bruins weren't consistent in short yardage situations. They could not protect the quarterback when they faced any type of blitz in 2023. And regardless of how smart the enemy or Chip Kelly are the enemy. He was in the commanders. They couldn't protect the quarterback. Chip Kelly couldn't protect the quarterback. But both solid offensive minds. You can't protect the quarterback. You're going to go nowhere, right? You can win a couple games, but it's going to look ugly. And I would like to believe what they brought in with more depth, more co competition. UCLA's offensive line will be slightly better. You know, 
better than just getting seven sacks against Utah and Dante Moore getting pummeled at the end of that game in Salt Lake City in 2023. Now, you move forward. Can UCLA protect the quarterback? Can Garbers be a QB1? They need those things to go hand in hand because I think the running game, the, the skill set, the skill players, they got what they need. Special teams, UCLA needs to be much better. Returning, kicking field goals, those are two things UCLA must get better. At least one of those things. Either field position with for the return game or scoring points and stealing three, which can keep you in some of these games that might be more low scoring as the Big Ten tends to be when you play stout defenses like Iowa or you're going to a Penn State on the road. you got to be able to kick field goals in crazy environments when the students are waving their flags, saying utterly terrible nonsense to prepare yourselves for these crazy times. And the biggest question is how will the defense be? A new defensive coordinator who has been a defensive coordinator before, who has been in the UCLA system last year, but no talent left in terms of the elite pass rushing talent from the edge. They've tried to replace it. They've done their best in 25 to go get guys who can rush, like a Scott Taylor, who did go to that Bruin recruit pool party that they hosted over the weekend at the end of July. Now they can have the week contact, the one week of contact with their current recruits and commits. But UCLA does not have a lot of depth at the linebacking position in my mind. They don't have a lot of depth pass rushing in secondary. There's not a lot of depth. There are some elite talented spots in tier defensive line with Toia. You've got the linebackers like Oladejo and Medrano. And you do got some veteran DBs who have been around. But it's college football. The wear and tear adds up. And not every scheme, not every game is going to be every player's best game. And some matchups aren't going to work the best. How is Paco Malloy going to exploit the opponent's youth? Because there's a lot of new quarterbacks in the Big Ten on UCLA schedule. A lot of new coordinators. How is he going to exploit that while hiding his own weaknesses if his team can't generate any pass rush, which was the team's sole strength in 2023? All right. They need that to be elite coming up in this next season, right? Not elite, but I'll take that back. They just need it to be serviceable, get some pass rush, generate some pressure, and hope the opposition throws into some mistakes and take advantage of those like they did in 23. All right, now we're going to wrap up and go into segment three of the Locked On UCLA podcast. When we come back, we're talking more about what is the biggest men's basketball game I'm excited for in this upcoming season that we know about for UCLA. Well, those warm, sunny days are here. And with factors, no prep, no mess meals, you can fuel up for those sunny days right now. Meet your wellness goals, have chef crafted meals, multiple options for protein plus calorie smart and keto. They've got fresh, never frozen meals like that are ready in two minutes. A fresh, never frozen meal ready in two minutes. My goodness, that is exactly what I'm looking for. I never had enough time to go make food. And yet you got something that's good. That's a new healthy routine. You can kickstart it even though it's the end of 24. It's the back half of the new calendar year. And you can have 35 different meals, 60 add-ons to choose from, and you can meet your wellness goal throughout the dietitian approved meals. Head to factormeals.com slash locked on college 50. Again, use the code locked on college 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your first month. Again, that's locked on college 50 at factormeals.com locked on slash locked on 50 for 50% off your first box and 20% off your next month while your subscription is active. You're sitting there, you got that passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 120 million plus parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. As well, items only exclusions apply eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. 
All right, cruising on here and locked on UCLA. Let's talk the UCLA men's basketball schedule. This is what we know. We don't know dates. We don't know the full schedule. We don't know when and where UCLA is playing exactly channel-wise, but it's going to have a lot more exposure than the archaic Pac-12 network. Let's remember, this is what we know. UCLA has Gonzaga. They've got Arizona. They've got New Mexico. They've got North Carolina. My goodness, North Carolina, Madison Square. You've got your Big Ten schedule, which includes, we're not including the old Pac-12 rivals, which you play six games against Oregon, USC, and Washington. UCLA gets to play home games against Iowa, Michigan, Michigan State, Minnesota, Ohio State, Penn State, Wisconsin. Some brand name basketball teams in the Big Ten coming to Pauley Pavilion. And then Illinois, Scrappy Ball Club, Indiana, Maryland, Nebraska, Northwestern, Purdue, Rutgers, all on the road. And I've been looking and reading and listening. I think Rutgers can be very good from what I've read when it comes to what they brought in this year. So Rutgers will be a fun road game. But the most excited game or two for this year, which will be a very tough season, I was saying UCLA's got a lot of depth, but they still might lose seven to eight games. And the more I watch, there's going to be a lot of fun games, right? There's no cupcakes. There's no random games UCLA should play that should have no fans. UCLA should be selling out every game this year. And I know some of those games might be a little tougher to watch when you're playing the early season and major games. But when you get... I believe with the confirmation Mick Cronin told, or John Rothstein said to Mick Cronin, you got New Mexico on the schedule. Not sure where that game's at. You've got Gonzaga in the Intuit Dome, which is supposed to be a state-of-the-art new arena that will officially open soon for the Clippers. Arizona, and that's always going to be fun, because that matchup will be hyped up. Arizona's supposed to be good with Caleb Love returning. Even though they did lose some talent, they're supposed to be still pretty solid. And then North Carolina, man, kind of get that revenge for the loss in the 22 Sweet 16. And R.J. Davis is literally still there, right? You can get double the amount of North Carolina revenge between R.J. Davis still at Carolina for his fifth billionth year, Caleb Love still around. You can get as much revenge against former Tar Heels as you can, even though none of the players on that team are still with UCLA and a contributing factor. Okay. I think the biggest and most exciting Big Ten games, in my mind, I would say... Home game, mind you, I'm not going based off what will be the best matchup. I'm thinking nostalgia, brands. I'm excited for Michigan State to come to UCLA. That just makes sense. Michigan State coming to UCLA. Now with Ohio State, Michigan having new coaches, Wisconsin always being good. You could argue those might be better games. You could argue it might be much better. I'm sitting here thinking Tom Izzo, Mick Cronin will be a screaming match of the century. That is the matchup I want to see. And if Michigan State puts forth a competitive game, they faced off against each other. Remember the 21 first four, UCLA came back miraculously just to win in overtime, just to barely get into the official first round of the NCAA tournament and then go on their final four run. And UCLA's beat Michigan State a couple of times in the tournament. They've always had some fun battles back and forth sprinkled over the recent history with Tom Izzo versus UCLA. It's fun that's finally coming to Pauly. That's just a game that just intrigues me. Not that the rest of them don't. I say the UCLA Big Ten home schedule with the new Big Ten schools that UCLA hasn't really faced before, that is a solid schedule. The road games aren't as eye-popping in terms of name value, right? Northwestern has been good, you know, those recent years. UCLA beat them in the tournament. Boo-booey and everything. And Purdue, but post-Zach Eady, that's something. Although Purdue is always good. Rutgers, you know, they, they have the name... But UCLA, you know, it just has not has the ties. As good as Rutgers probably will be this year. My mind, I'm intrigued in the Michigan State home game. I'm very intrigued to see UCLA with the blue and gold clash against the Indiana Hoosiers in Assembly Hall. So speak of the tradition, right? Speak of the tradition and the intrigue. And yes, the Purdue game will meet a lot with the John Wooden folks, right? But it's going to be more go to the other Indiana school, literally Indiana, and see the Bruins playing in Assembly Hall, the blue uniforms clashing against the red and the white. That's going to be, see, like the blue and gold I'm wearing, this isn't a UCLA jersey, though. This is this is a replica, you know, Laker jersey throwback, right? But the blue and gold works well for the show. UCLA, I'm excited for the Indiana game. And mind you, this isn't based off the 
extreme talent, the matchups, what should be the best based off players. No, UCLA at Indiana should be amazing. UCLA against Michigan State at home. As much as I want UCLA to kick the little crap out of Gonzaga, I do think there something has to be said for UCLA playing Arizona and rekindling some Pac-12 blood back and forth. Right Now, I'm not sure if I've seen where exactly that game will be. It's been back and forth between whether it's Vegas. Not sure Mick Corden wants to go back to Tucson right now, and I'm not sure if Arizona wants to go to UCLA. Vegas seems like a likely spot or wherever they'll play if they want to play it at Phoenix or something. But UCLA has that game, according to John Rothstein, on the schedule. And those are the three games, right? Your non-conference game, you get against Arizona. You get your game against Indiana on the road to start the year. All those iconic games UCLA is missing in the football schedule this year, other than a trip to Penn State, they're getting in basketball, which is easier because you play everybody once and you get one home, one road game. I think UCLA is going to do their best and they're going to have a lot of exciting sellout games this year. All right. And I'm excited. Mick Cron's got a very deep team. He's talked about his questions at center, but this is a team that's going to be good, really good and should compete for a Big Ten championship in year one as a Big Ten conference member, which is coming up soon, all right? In the next few episodes, we're going to kind of count down to those Big Ten days. What are your favorite Pac-12 memories, recent, old? We'll talk about all those, and we'll talk about what's coming up in the Big Ten slate, all right? Get your hands up, Bruins fans. Eight clap time, baby. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, U, C, L, A. UCLA fight, fight, fight. This has been Locked On UCLA. Zach signing off. Go Bruins.